Australia's discovery became a cornerstone in European exploration. Its colonisation secured Britain's place as a colonial power across the globe. Sir James Cook's claim to the land would open Europe's doors to a new wave of emigration. Yet despite much of Australia's discovery being attributed towards European exploration, few take into account its speculated presence thousands of years prior. Before European ships ventured into the open ocean in search of land, ancient Greek geographers had speculated the existence of a southern continent south of the equator. Popular opinion shared by most speculators often cite the continent as being a land where hell itself resided. In the wake of Alexander's reign, cross-ocean voyages and trade expeditions would surge. Greek merchant ships would sail throughout the Indian Ocean. Although never proven, it's possible that at least one of these ships may have reached the Australian coast. The Romans would continue to speculate just as the Greeks had prior. The Romans named it Terra Australis, translated to Southland. However, in the centuries that followed, much speculation diminished during the fall of the Roman Empire and the rise of the Dark Ages. These included centuries-old maps of Asia, which would be recharted a thousand years later. Fortunately, speculation once again resurfaced when an Italian expedition led by Marco Polo and his father recounted their journey to Asia. Whilst docked in Sumatra, Polo described from rumour of a land far south. These varied from the Great Island of Java and the Great Rome of Beach. Set charts of the time even visualised both Java and Australia as being one continent, extending all the way to Antarctica. However, whether these names were that of the same place, or not, remains unknown. Polo's accounts of his journey to Asia would help contribute to reignited interest in colonial exploration. His copies of his memoirs would be carried by the likes of Christopher Columbus and King Henry of Portugal. <laughs>